has the Etsy algorithm stolen your shop? Are you sitting there with no sales wondering what the heck happened? Today, I'm going to tell you three reasons why this might have happened and what you can do to take your shop back. Welcome to Cha-Ching. My name is Terry. I'll be your tour guide through the Etsy maze and your partner in crime, all things small business. With over a decade of experience on Etsy and more than two decades of experience as a business owner, I'm here to make some sense of the craziness. Reason number one is low engagement rate. Firstly, it's important to realize that the Etsy algorithm is designed to give the customer the best possible experience. This means it prioritizes shops and listings that have high engagement. If your shop's engagement has dropped recently, it might seem like the algorithm is working against you. So, what can you do to boost engagement? Number one, try to engage more with your customers. Respond to their questions promptly and encourage them to leave reviews. This can help boost your visibility with the algorithm. Number two, you can bring your own traffic. This definitely triggers the algorithm to pay attention to your shop. Use Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, uh, or even TikTok to promote your listings and bring your audience where they can buy. Reason two, outdated listings. The algorithm favors listings that are regularly updated. If you've been sticking to the same listings for a long time, the algorithm might push your shop down in search results. There are two things you can do to fix this. Okay, number one is you can take old listings that are underperforming and update them with new titles, descriptions, and tags. Use a program like eRank or Everbee to find the most current keywords and then add them to your listing generously. It's important to realize that sometimes keyword value changes over time. So the keywords you are using when you created the listing and that worked for so long may not be relevant now. All right, the second thing you can do to update your listings is copy listings that are performing but maybe not as great as they used to and then change out the image and maybe a variation on the title. Maybe take out some keywords, add some new ones in. Um, it's important that you don't change the original listing. You need to copy the listing and then do all of this to the copied listing. Etsy does not have a problem with this. A lot of people worry about having duplicate listings and it's, it's not an issue. You just do not want to have the same picture and you don't want the listing to look exactly the same. So in search results, if both of your results come up and they see two different pictures, they're just going to click on the one that attracts them the most. Make sure that you keep track of what you're changing. So maybe have a spreadsheet of um, old title versus new title and keywords you removed and keywords you added in. This is going to be important for you to continue to research what's working and what's not working. I have seen this strategy work time and time again. It helps on two fronts. You can revive a weaker listing without jeopardizing it. And number two, it gives you an added listing. Remember, the algorithm loves fresh content. Reason number three is customer experience. The algorithm takes into consideration the overall customer experience. This includes everything from your product all the way to your customer service. If there's been a dip in your shop's performance and you suspect that your customer service isn't what it should be, do one of the following two things. Number one, treat your customers like gold. Are you treating your customers like gold? If not, you should be. Even bad customers are doing their part to boost you in the algorithm. Set your customer service standards higher than other shops. If a customer wants to cancel an order and you haven't started it yet, graciously cancel the order. They want to return an item? Find out why and show them that you are willing to do whatever's necessary to give them 100% satisfaction. Your motto should be make them happy no matter what. I'm talking over the top here. And number two, keeping customers informed goes a long way to customer satisfaction. 
If you set this up in advance, it can happen with very little interaction from you personally. In my shop, when I get an order, they get my initial email that tells them to expect a proof if they've ordered a personalized item. Then when I get the proof ready, they get another email with the proof telling them what will happen when they approve and also letting them know that they can request changes at that time. Once they approve, they get one final message from me thanking them for their approval and telling them that I'm going to be getting their order into production ASAP and that they will have tracking information uploaded as soon as it ships. I cannot tell you how many five-star reviews I have gotten from customers saying how amazing I was to work with when I had almost zero interaction with them personally. I mean, I literally just sent them template messages. The difference is, is customers need that interaction to feel personal. So I crafted messages that had that personal touch to them and it's easy for me, it's a time saver, I hit send and they get a message that they feel good about. So what can you do if you feel like the Etsy algorithm has stolen your shop? Don't panic, that's the first thing. <laughs> Just start implementing the strategies that we've discussed today. Engage with your customers, update your listings regularly, and provide an excellent customer experience. Remember, the algorithm is not your enemy. It's a tool that when understood and used correctly can help your shop thrive. If you liked this video, hit the like button. If you loved this video, hit subscribe and the notification bell so you won't miss new content when it's uploaded. Remember, success on Etsy is all about strategy and I am here to help you develop yours. I'm wishing you a cha-ching filled day. So until next time, see you later alligator.